since you folks are here, you're not only as an observer, you also made some announcements. So tell about your activities, what you are doing at them and what announcement you made. Yeah, look, we have a lot of stuff. I mean, Kubernetes is a fast moving ecosystem. Um, so just keeping up with that ecosystem is, is a major task for uh, uh, anyone, uh, you know, supporting uh, Kubernetes. Um, and, and we've got some really exciting features added uh, to our service. Uh, the good thing with being service is it's instantly made available to our users. They don't have to go and upgrade and update and, 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 and apply patches and so on. We don't have to do that. You just show up to our uh, uh, service one day and you can actually see all of the new services, new features that we've, we've added. Uh, there are about three key themes to our uh, new features. One is uh, uh, just expanding cloud awareness and, and platform awareness in general. Um, and, and the we have to recognize that most of the Kubernetes installations are running in public cloud, right? So uh, just being Kubernetes aware is not enough for Kubernetes solutions. You also have to be aware of where that Kubernetes clusters are, are sitting on, and that's predominantly cloud today. So expanding that integration to primarily Microsoft AKS, we already are uh, well integrated with AWS EKS, uh, we're expanding that integration to Microsoft uh, uh, AKS service as well. Um, the second theme is just enterprise hardening. Uh, we released uh, or we got to the market as a developer-friendly backup as a service, uh, DevOps-focused backup as a service uh, uh, player. Um, certainly a lot of interesting innovation is happening at the enterprise space with Kubernetes. and and. Uh, we have to recognize that Kubernetes is used by a lot of small companies that are high tech and trying to deploy and everything in SaaS. And it is big on large enterprises uh, uh, like retail companies, Walmarts, the Home Depots and, and Chick-fil-A's of the world uh, and a lot of financial organizations as well. So we, we do have to bring our service to be closer to what the enterprises are doing as well. Um, so to address that, we've added uh, role-based access control, allowing uh, self-service backup and recovery capabilities uh, for enterprise customers. Uh, we've also uh, adding support for on-prem isolated object storage uh, as well. So you could back up to your own uh, uh, storage without having to be on the cloud. And not everybody is comfortable with putting things in the cloud. Uh, we, we have to recognize that there is the other half that wants to keep everything in-house. So even though we're a SaaS service, we are enabling people to store data uh, locally on their own private object stores. So we're doing that. So that's the second big theme, just getting closer to what enterprises are asking for. And the third piece is um, you will see at the show again and again that there is a lot of cluster sprawl happening. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm running 200 clusters. I'm running you know, 300 clusters and so on. The reason people run so many clusters is because there aren't enough ecosystem around multi-tenancy for clusters. You're not allowing a single cluster to be shared across your test teams, the QA teams, and the, the development teams, release teams. Uh, they're all kind of running their own clusters. Um, oftentimes that's not uh, what the enterprises are asking for. So um, the third piece is about enabling that multi-tenancy um, and, and actually delivering backup and recovery capability that is self-service in that multi-tenant environment. Um, we're all just working towards addressing this cluster sprawl issue so that you can have one big cluster that is shared by multiple teams as opposed to having 100 clusters and uh, that multi-tenancy is, is the other piece we are addressing uh, in this release.